Thank you all for joining us today for Med's Dr. Miriam and Sheldon G. Adelson phone seminar. I'm Jennifer Deco, your host today. These are very difficult times right now for our friends in Israel. Uh, since the beginning of this month, Palestinian terrorists have launched a vicious campaign against innocent Israelis. Uh, at least 10 Israelis have been killed and uh, more than 100 have been wounded. Attacks have come in the form of knife attacks, screwdriver stabbings, and car rammings, as well as rock throwings. And also, uh, this new wave of terrorism has largely been misreported on and misrepresented by the media. Unfortunately, Palestinian terrorists are encouraged to wage these attacks against Israelis by the Palestinian Authority, its President Mahmoud Abbas, PA officials, uh, PA control TV, clerics, one who actually called on Palestinians to form stabbing quads and attack Jews with, quote, axes and butcher knives. Today we are honored to have a friend of Amet, Ambassador Yoram Ettinger, to shed light upon these issues. Thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Palestinian terrorism uh, has always been, as it is now, institutional, never random, contrary to the lone wolves uh, myth. Uh, we are talking about Palestinian terrorism, which has deliberately, institutionally, systematically targeted Arab and Israeli non-combatants, not only Israelis. And when one talks about Palestinian terrorism, uh, we have to turn to Arab countries in order to understand the scope of uh, Palestinian terrorism. Uh, we're talking about Palestinian terrorism haunting Jordan, especially, but not only, during the 1968-1970 uh, Black September days. We're talking about Palestinian terrorism, which has haunted Lebanon, especially, but not solely, uh, from 1971 until 1982. We're talking about Palestinian terrorism haunting Kuwait uh, during the Iraqi invasion of uh, Kuwait. We're talking about Palestinian serving as the ruthless arm of Saddam Hussein in Iraq until 2002, roughing up Iraqi citizens. We're talking about Palestinian terrorism serving Assad until 2012. And we're talking about currently Palestinian terrorism siding with the Muslim Brotherhood terrorist groups inside Egypt against the regime of uh, Sisi. Uh, we're talking about Palestinian terrorism, which has aligned itself with the anti-American regimes uh, in the Middle East, joining forces with the Ayatollahs in Iran ever since the demise of the Shah of Iran back in 1979. We're talking about Palestinians uh, siding and fighting alongside of Taliban, Al-Qaeda, and ISIS. In fact, uh, the spiritual mentor of bin Laden was Abdullah Azam, an Arab from uh, Samaria. And certainly, we're talking about Palestinian terrorism, which has been a recent branch of Islamic, Islamic terrorism, which has afflicted the Middle East, actually, since the appearance or the eruption of Islam back in the 7th uh, century. And uh, last and not uh, least, we're talking about anti-Jewish Palestinian uh, terrorism, which has been a Middle East fixture, uh, at least since the early 1920s, which means well, well, well before the 48, 1948 establishment of Israel, certainly before the 1967 return of uh, Jews to Judea and uh, Samaria. We're talking about the political guideline of uh, contemporary uh, Palestinian terrorism, namely the Palestinian uh, Covenant. It was published in 1964, three years before the reunification of uh, Jerusalem. And recently, uh, we heard about the collaboration 
between Palestinian terrorists uh, and the uh, Nazis. This is well uh, documented, and once again, the aim then uh, was not to constrain the size of the Jewish state. The aim then, as it is now, was to eliminate the Jewish state altogether. By the way, uh, the very hardcore evidence of the collaboration between the Mufti, Haj Amin al-Husseini, and the Hitler, the very direct, the very active role of the Mufti in energizing uh, the Nazis' drive to uh, exterminate uh, Jews, uh, was uh, always uh, highlighted at Yad Vashem until, until uh, Oslo 1993, uh, when the architects of the a self-destruct suicidal uh, Oslo agreement also managed to uh, relocate uh, the hardcore evidence about the Mufti and the Palestinians to a very remote uh, site at, uh, at Yad, uh, Yad Vashem. So that's as a form of a background uh, to realize what uh, are we talking about, not uh, random highly, highly endemically institutional, not a phenomena which is uh, plaguing uh, Jews, uh, only this has been a phenomena which has afflicted, plagued uh, Arabs as well as Jews. And last and not least, the involvement of Palestinians in terrorizing various Arabs, uh, always pro-American Arab uh, countries, uh, also uh, caused uh, waves of refugees from some of those uh, countries. Uh, Kuwait expelled 300,000 Palestinians after being liberated by the Americans, and the expulsion was a Kuwaiti reaction to Palestinians terrorizing uh, Kuwait. Uh, there, there have been more than 100,000 fleeing uh, Syria once Assad basically lost control of uh, Syria, and they fled uh, for fear of retribution by Syrians against uh, Palestinian terrorism inside Syria. Uh, after the demise of Saddam, some uh, 50,000 Palestinians fled Iraq for the same, uh, for the same uh, reason. And currently, uh, Palestinians are... Uh, fleeing uh, Egypt uh, for fear, again, of retribution uh, against the backdrop of them collaborating with uh, Muslim Brotherhood uh, terrorism. Uh, I would like to stop here and maybe turn it uh, now to uh, uh, questions, unless you want me to continue, which I, I can do. Yeah, that would be great. You can continue. Okay. Uh, I, it seems to me that uh, one element which we should which we should uh, realize is the role played by um, american taxpayer in uh, inflaming uh, palestinian terrorism um, uh, the us uh, does uh, channel to the coffers of the palestinian authority 400 million dollars every single year which basically funds the Palestinian hate education machinery from kindergarten through 12th grade in mosques and the Palestinian Authority controlled uh, media. Uh, uh, th there is no more effective uh, manufacturing line or production line of terrorists than the hate education which was instituted by Mahmoud Abbas back in, at the end of 1993, when he was Arafat's uh, senior deputy. Uh, he has sustained it until this very day, and by now, a generation and a half of uh, Palestinians have been brainwashed into uh, terrorism. The education system uh, in Judea and Samaria, uh, the Palestinian education system also uh, highlights it highlights uh, the uh, tenets of uh, Islam, which feeds uh, terrorism, uh, such uh, elements or tenets as the super supremacy of 
Islam over all other uh, religions, uh, the permanent state of war between the abode of Islam and the abode of the so-called infidel, uh, the duty of uh, Muslims to bring the infidel to submission, either through uh, jihad, holy war, or through conversion, uh, the inadmissibility of uh, the so-called infidel sovereignty over any land uh, which is divinely ordained to uh, Islam, uh, and uh, certainly uh, the sublime honor of sacrificing one's life on the altar of Islam's war on the, on the infidel. Uh, when one talks about Palestinian terrorism, uh, we should also uh, be aware, we should be aware that Islamic terrorism has inspired uh, terrorist groups in Europe, in Africa, in Asia, as well as uh, the American continent, including a few hundred sleeper cells in the U.S. And obviously, the more successful is perceived to be Palestinian terrorism in the Middle East, the more audacious uh, those other terrorist uh, elements uh, uh, evolve. Um, and uh, then uh, we have the issue of Palestinian terrorism, in my mind, uh, providing uh, the writing on the, on the wall. Um, we, we study this week um, the portion of the Torah which refers to Abraham, and uh, Abraham's, uh, uh, one of his qualities was the ability to read the writing on the wall. He read the writing on the wall, and he uh, implemented it all the way to the land of, uh, of Israel. Today, we have also a writing on the wall. We see Palestinian terrorism, as we see, for instance, terrorism inside Syria, and some folks have already understood the writing on the wall in uh, Syria, namely being relieved that Israel did not uh, retreat from the Golan Heights, which would have traumatized uh, northern uh, Israel. Uh, the question is, do we read the writing on the wall, which is provided by Palestinian terrorism in Judea and Samaria, and do we understand uh, the consequences of any, of any Israeli withdrawal from the mountain ridges of Judea and Samaria? With all due respect to the Golan Heights, they are relevant to the tip, northern tip, uh, uh, northern eastern tip of, uh, of Israel in the upper Galilee. When it comes to the mountain ridges of Judea and Samaria, should should uh, Israel undertake what I would consider to be a suicidal step of uh, retreating from the mountain ridges of Judea and Samaria, uh, this would traumatize Jerusalem, uh, Ben-Gurion Airport, Tel Aviv. Roughly 80% of the population of Israel, 80% of the infrastructures of, uh, of Israel. And uh, last and not uh, least, uh, the question is, uh, how does one uh, face up to uh, uh, Palestinian uh, terrorism? And uh, again, first and foremost, uh, we have to turn back to uh, the track record. And once again, uh, Abraham. Uh, Abraham was uh, the first uh, uh, politically incorrect uh, Jew. Uh, he defied the majority. He defied the, the odds then in the in the wide uh, world. He was thinking in an out. He was thinking and acting in an out of the box uh, manner. This is exactly how we should also uh, face up to uh, Palestinian terrorism. Uh, namely, uh, we should uh, condemn and uh, remove ourselves from what I would call the immoral, the immoral, uh, moral equivalence uh, equating between Israeli counterterrorism on one hand and Palestinian terrorism uh, on the other. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we should certainly refrain uh, from any financial or other assistance to the Palestinian Authority as long as as long as 
they conduct hate uh, education. Uh, we certainly should not negotiate at all, not directly, indirectly, with hate uh, educators. And uh, uh, unless we would like them to feel that they can get away with murder, uh, there should not be no contemplation of any uh, concession, again, until there is a dramatic, dramatic uh, transformation of uh, the Palestinian uh, Authority. Uh, when it comes to uh, political incorrectness, uh, we should shift gears. We should shift gears from chasing uh, individual mosquitoes, and we should focus on draining the swamp. Uh, unless we drain the swamp, those mosquitoes will keep on uh, coming. And when it comes to draining the swamp, uh, there are roughly, I would say, three major um, uh, tactics which I would uh, suggest. First and foremost, uh, again, uh, elimination, uprooting completely of all all elements of hate education, in educational institution, religious institutions, and media institutions, and uh, until that is undertaken, no communication whatsoever with the Palestinian Authority, uh, we should launch, in my mind, a large-scale, disproportional, preemptive uh, military operation throughout Judea and Samaria and the Arab sections of uh, Jerusalem. We should ignore completely the calls, mostly by Secretary of State uh, John Kerry, to uh, restrain ourselves as uh, when it comes to self-defense, uh, the fund a fundamental uh, statue in uh, Judaism, as we are taught in the Talmud, by the way, is uh, uh, you must uh, preempt and kill. He who rises up to kill uh, you, you don't do that. Uh, you sacrifice your own life and you destroy your own life and your family's uh, life. And, uh, and then when it comes to uh, solving, minimizing uh, terrorism, uh, we should also uh, uh, severely, severely punish uh, the families and the communities of uh, terrorists. And uh, this is a very, very humane action because families and communities should not fail to exercise responsibility. Uh, a family which uh, does not exercise responsibility and therefore uh, uh, enable, facilitate uh, a son, a, a husband, uh, a relative, to terrorize should be punished in order to prevent and minimize such future occurrences. A community which does not take care uh, restraining its people should be uh, punished as well, uh, let alone the fact uh, which we uh, are aware of. Not only do they fail to exercise responsibility, they also fail in providing inducement to uh, such activities, and we have seen that, again, in the policy of Mahmoud uh, Abbas, uh, honoring, honoring terrorists by naming uh, streets and parks and squares and sport uh, tournaments uh, after them, uh, as well as uh, financially assistant, assisting uh, their families. All this, in my mind, uh, must be uprooted, must be uprooted uh, if we wish to uh, curb, to limit, to restrain uh, terrorism. And uh, last and not uh, least, if we want to frustrate Palestinian terrorism, which aims uh, to set Israel on a course of uh, retreat, uh, we should uh, proclaim a constructive response, uh, namely expanding Jewish construction. They want us to retreat from our homes in Judea and Samaria and in Jerusalem and the rest of Israel. We should build in those uh, areas. And in fact, I would even publish uh, a list uh, telling uh, the terrorists, you injure a uh, Jew, uh, 15 uh, new housing units will be built in the area closest to the site of terrorism.
Judaism. If you dare murder a Jew, 50 more units shall be built. And now, let's see, if you are acting uh, in a way which would expand dramatically uh, Jewish construction in the area, uh, the more you expand terrorism, uh, the more we, and in fact exponentially, we are going to, uh, to construct. I'm aware that such policy would trigger uh, international pressure, would trigger American pressure, who knows, maybe even uh, suspending military supplies, suspending joint exercises, condemning us at the UN, etc. Uh, it seems to me that all we need to do is simply turn back to the precedents uh, set by uh, former prime ministers, all of them, from Ben-Gurion through uh, Shamir. Uh, each one of them defied in exactly such a manner, in a much more audacious manner, American and international uh, pressure and uh, punishments. Each one of them was a victim of short-term uh, international uh, pressure, inconvenience, hardship. But all of them gained tremendously as far as long-term strategic respect, which was translated into uh, more and more uh, uh, larger and larger scope of cooperation, especially with the U.S., not only irrespective of their defiance, precisely because of that defiance, I don't think that uh, Americans are looking for an ally uh, who, are, who is a wimp and in retreat on a rainy day. They would like a defiant, much more than a wimpy ally. Um, as a moderator, I'm going to ask you the first question, Yoram. You laid out a very specific and interesting plan on ways to um, curb Palestinian terrorism. I was wondering how the Israeli government can help um, eliminate the incitement to kill and to hate among the Palestinian Authority. I understand that Bibi and other prime ministers have repeatedly called on the Palestinian Authority to stop the incitement completely, to have the education completely change. But is there a role for the Israeli government to somehow get involved and help make this change occur? Or rather, in addition, the international community as well? Well, calling upon them is uh, highly, highly, lowly, lowly ineffective. Uh, there is no need for talk. There is a need for walk. And uh, it seems to me that morally speaking, uh, strategically, practically uh, speaking, there should be, as of a uh, few years ago, and if not as of uh, this moment, an end suspension of all, and I emphasize all, direct, indirect, financial, agricultural, irrigation, uh, medical, everything. No more contacts with the Palestinian uh, uh, Authority. By the way, as would be the case with any uh, hate educator, uh, I have no doubt that whether you have a Republican or a Democrat in the White House, no American president would tolerate hate educators in any of the states of the Union. Uh, such organizations or individuals definitely would not be privy to uh, uh, Washington, uh, the federal government or state government, local government, assisting them. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind uh, they would be tried summarily, probably put behind the bars, sent away, sent away from any civilized uh, society. In uh, this case of Palestinian uh, hate education, we are not only talking about verbal hate education, we are talking about actual terrorism, which murders people, again, targeting Arab and Israeli non-combatants. Uh, um, it seems to me that uh, when it comes to uh, the U.S. and Israel, uh, they should set uh, the tone and make it very clear to Mahmoud Abbas and every Palestinian in Judea, Samaria, no more working in Israel, no more benefiting from, uh, from uh, Israel, likewise with the U.S., until you uproot completely, and I emphasize completely, and better yet, 
can demonstrate it for the next year. If you demonstrate it for the next year, then uh, we certainly will show our appreciation by renewing uh, contact. Great. Uh, thank you so much. Um, the next question is from Lindsay Schneider, uh, Research Associate at AMET. Um, she asks, why has the Israeli government not um, directed the IDF to have an operation uh, against the Palestinians? Um, it seems like the government is on the defense in trying to prevent and limit the effects of terrorism by instructing civilians with gun licenses to carry. But at what point will it be that the IDF will be instructed into an operation? Well, I, I can go back to uh, the eruption of the Second Intifada towards the end of uh, 2000. Uh, Ehud Barak was the prime minister. His reaction was wimpy. His reaction was so-called restrained. His reaction was building fences and uh, walls, which certainly not only does not stop Palestinian terrorism, it only adrenalizes uh, them because they detect, first of all, fear, they detect retreat, and they detect lack of will to flex a real uh, muscle. That caused Ehud Barak to be the shortest serving prime minister in Israeli history. He was resoundingly defeated by uh, Sharon. Uh, Sharon right away launched unrestrained, highly disproportional military operation throughout the whole of Judea and Samaria, broke the back of the Second Intifada, and until this very day, as a result of that unrestrained, disproportional uh, reaction to Palestinian terrorism, the Israeli military, Israeli Secret Service is at liberty, is at liberty to operate anywhere they wish in Judea, Samaria, be it Area A, Area B, Area C, downtown Nablus, downtown Hebron, and the Palestinian Authority has no right and no capability to stop them. Unfortunately, as of this moment, to the best to the best of my knowledge, and I don't pretend to know anything, but I have not noticed Israel yet, Israel yet, following such uh, 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 policy, such uh, tactic, and until we do that, we are not going to resurrect our posture of deterrence, and posture of deterrence is the main uh, issue. At this stage, the, the proof is in the pudding. Palestinians do not take our posture of deterrence seriously. If they would have, they would have not have resorted to this institutionalized uh, terrorism. They assume that we are not at this stage yet, at this stage of disproportional uh, all-out military, uh, military operation. One more element that uh, we should uh, realize for Israel to undertake uh, such disproportional, decisive, uh, comprehensive, unrestrained military step would serve the best interest of the vast majority of Palestinians. It takes one to uh, drive around Judea, Samaria, to realize that those Palestinians who do not reside in the uh, Mahmoud Abbas sections of Ramallah, uh, they are oppressed by very, very uh, dictatorial, corrupt uh, regime. Uh, 30, 40 percent unemployment is only one reflection of the regime in Ramallah, but the total lack of civil, civil liberties is another uh, reflection. And maybe most importantly, Palestinians vote with their feet. Uh, emigration from uh, Judea, Samaria by Arabs has uh, increased uh, substantially since uh, the year 2000. Uh, until then, it was mostly uh, Christians, the corrupt, ruthless regime of Mahmoud Abbas, and before that, Arafat forced Christians out of Bethlehem, out of Bejala, 
out of Ramallah. Ramallah, the headquarters of Mahmoud Abbas, is almost devoid of Christians. It used to be majority Christian until Oslo. Uh, Bethlehem used to be majority Christian. Now it's maybe 15, 1, 5 percent uh, uh, Christian. Uh, Bejala, probably even slimmer Christian uh, minority. Uh, in uh, 2014, net, net 25,000 left Judea Samaria, namely the number of those exiting over the number of those uh, returning. It was 25,000 in Judea Samaria. The year before, it was 20,000 net emigration. The year before that, it was 17,000 net emigration. And again, almost all of them Muslims. Uh, moreover, uh, there is a daily flow of uh, Arabs from Judea Samaria into Jerusalem. Uh, some of them are terrorists, but the vast, vast, vast majority uh, aim to enter Jerusalem in order to eventually get an Israeli ID card, becoming permanent residents of Jerusalem. They aim to benefit from Israeli uh, social uh, security, other benefits, but mostly human uh, rights. And it seems to me that those voting with their legs, they tell us something about the true sentiments in uh, Judea Samaria, where Arabs uh, refer to the regime of Mahmoud Abbas before that, Arafat, as the Tunisian Sodom and Gomorrah. The next question is, uh, the media keeps reporting this latest terrorism, knife rock throwing, car bashing assault as totally random, not organized in any way, but rather as a result of social media incitement. Do you see it this way, or do you think there is some coordination going on by Arabs? Well, uh, as, as I tried to highlight, that uh, Palestinian terrorism has been an endemic uh, feature since at least the early 1920s. It has hit, in fact, more Arabs than, uh, than uh, Jews, and therefore uh, there is no doubt it has been institutional, not random, certainly when we examine the hate education school textbooks uh, K through uh, K through 12. Uh, the whole talks about lone wolves uh, is spread uh, mostly by people who are ignorant of uh, Middle East uh, reality, uh, but also also by people who do have responsibility uh, in combating uh, terrorism, but they do not want to uh, expose their own vulnerabilities, their own lack of capabilities, their own lack of backbone, and therefore they spread this myth of a lone, uh, lone wolf. Uh, Palestinian terrorism is anything, anything but uh, lone wolves. Just ask uh, the Jordanians who got a taste of it between 1968 and 1970, when Palestinian terrorism aimed at toppling the hash of, uh, of uh, Jordan, uh, just ask the Lebanese who still faced uh, Palestinian terrorism inside uh, Lebanon uh, and other countries as well, certainly uh, Kuwait, which tasted it back in 1990. Uh, none of them assumes that uh, Palestinian terrorism is uh, that of lone wolves. And by the way, it, is, uh, it has been reflected by the attitudes of uh, Arab countries towards the Palestinians. The other day, I uh, went through uh, the different issues of the most important Saudi daily, Ashark al Awsat, And I went back to January uh, all the way to today, examining their opinion pages. There are maybe one, maybe two at most opinion uh, columns, articles uh, in the last 10 months in Ashark al-Awsat, which deal with a Palestinian issue. The Saudis 
are not backing the Palestinians and Palest or Palestinian terrorism. None of the Gulf, uh, other Gulf countries, has backed uh, them. Certainly, Jordan and Egypt do not. And yes, we hear the talk, but we have not seen the walk. Not even the columns, opinion columns, in their own uh, media. Uh, let's go back. To uh, 2014, we fought Hamas terrorism in uh, Gaza. All, all pro-U.S. Arab countries supported Israel's war on Hamas terrorism for a simple reason. They are aware that Palestinian terrorism also haunts their own homeland security. And therefore, they have not, never, in fact, flexed a muscle on behalf of Palestinians other than their uh, uh, talking uh, mus muscle. They have not uh, sh showered Palestinians with resources, only with uh, rhetoric. Uh, anybody who examines uh, Arab pledges of support for Palestinians would know that only a glimpse of those pledges actually reaches the, the banks. The rest remains as talk, but never translated into a uh, walk. Given that the PA actively incites violence against Jews and publicly applauds uh, murderers as martyrs um, and teaches murder and terrorism, what steps can be taken to force the U.S. government to label the Palestinian Authority as a terrorist organization? Well, it, it seems to me that uh, Americans uh, should act in accordance with American uh, interest, uh, as well as American values, American morality. Uh, I don't think anybody would argue that hate education uh, defies American values. Um, hardly anybody can argue the fact that hate education feeds uh, terrorism. Nobody can ignore the fact that uh, Palestinian hate education, just like Iranian hate education, target the arrogant, infidel, uh, great uh, Satan, uh, as they call it, uh, USA. And, uh, and therefore, it seems to me that it behooves uh, those who control the, the purse of the taxpayer, namely the legislature, to take uh, adequate uh, steps. And it's mind-boggling, it's mind-boggling that uh, uh, American legislators have not yet, have not yet uh, suspended all, all financial assistance uh, to the Palestinian Authority. In fact, uh, I'm, uh, I'm bewildered that American legislators have not legislated a suspension of all contacts with the Palestinian uh, Authority until there is an end to hate education. Uh, some of us remember uh, how uh, did the white regime in South Africa uh, uh, crumbled. Uh, it was not because of any international resolutions. It was not because of international pressure. It was not because of international sanction. It was because of one vote on Capitol Hill, House, and Senate which uh, called for, not called, uh, stipulated, legislated an end to all direct and indirect contacts with the white regime of South Africa. Then President Reagan vetoed it. The veto was overturned by both chambers, and the, that was the end of the white regime in South Africa. Uh, when I compare the Palestinian Authority to the white regime in South Africa, the only difference is that the white regime in South Africa was pro-American. Uh, the Palestinian Authority is both uh, um, uh, hate education uh, regime, uh, anti-civil liberties regime, but also endemically anti-American, uh, but still gets $400 million every single year, which, let's face it, funds, funds hate education, funds terrorism, funds anti-American movements in the Middle East. To the discussion. Well, my, my suggestion, my suggestion 
uh, to uh, Americans, and I'm talking now to Americans, my suggestion is to focus on what's good and what's bad for America. And as I tried to highlight, we, uh, we have ample, ample evidence of systematic, deliberate, institutional campaign of terrorism targeting pro-American Arabs, targeting American interest in the region, hate education, which is anti-American, uh, and hate education, which contradicts American values. All elements which uh, relate to the Jewish state, which relates to uh, Jewish religion, which relates to Jewish sites, uh, are important. But I do not believe that they should be the centerpiece of uh, any effort here in this country, in the USA. Uh, if if uh, Palestinian Authority activities uh, are not uh, uh, significant as far as American interest, then I would say, uh, realistically, one should not expect American legislators to divert their attention away from major American concerns to an insignificant issue. But this one is very significant. It's significant strategically, it's significant ideologically, it's significant uh, morally, and it's significant as far as the impact on the American taxpayers' money, which is being abused, misused, directed against the very interest of the American uh, taxpayer, and I think this should be the, the highlight or the crux of uh, any contact with American legislators, which I believe, which I believe at the end of the day is the most effective venue. It's very important to speak in uh, schools, universities, uh, synagogues, churches, and I do it uh, myself. But much more important, critically important, is ongoing communications with House members, senators, and probably most importantly, their professional uh, staffers. They control the purse. They are co-equal. They are co-determining. It's true that in most cases, sadly, they have relinquished uh, their co-equal, co-determining role in accordance with the U.S. Constitution. But the muscle is there. Uh, and should they be aware of the consequences, should they be aware of what is at uh, stake, I believe they also will uh, take into uh, action. And to get them into action, I think the attention should be paid. Why is it important to them rather than why is it important to the Jewish state? Thank you, Yoram. And the one final question that we received is, is there a possibility for Israel to deport any of the perpetrators potentially to Gaza? Well, uh, the, the, the capabilities are to deport anywhere we wish, whether it's Gaza or somewhere in the Indian Ocean or in the Pacific or, or anywhere the capabilities are there. Uh, the question is, is the willpower there, is the understanding there? And also, uh, most very importantly, just like in this country, so it is in Israel, there is always uh, arm wrestling between the various branches of government. And therefore, the executive, the legislature, uh, the military uh, can aspire for one uh, tactic, uh, but then, as happened in recent uh, days, uh, the courts in Israel, the judiciary, may declare it uh, a non-constitutional uh, illegal. Uh, that uh, requires, obviously, legislation. Uh, the judiciary may declare something illegal because there is no law which justify it, whether it is demolition, whether it is expulsion, whether it, incar whether it is incarceration, or, or w whatever. Uh, but the power of the legislature, the Knesset in this case, is to legislate uh, updated uh, laws which uh, would uh, uh, minimize the possibility of the judicial
judiciary interfering in a determined uh, battle against uh, Palestinian terrorism. One, one more comment, if I may, uh, before sure. uh, closing down. Uh, uh, just uh, wanted to wish Shabbat Shalom to everybody and uh, pay uh, our attention again uh, to this week's, uh, not uh, Parsha, but the uh, Haftarah, uh, uh, which uh, does discuss a very important element, uh, and this is the difference between, uh, in Hebrew, in Hebrew, Ayef and Yagea, which is the difference between being weary and being tired. Uh, when you combat terrorism, you get tired. But you should never get weary, you should never get pessimistic, you should never get uh, fatalistic. The Jewish people have faced terrorism from the days of Abraham until this very day. And it's only because we never allowed weariness to take over that we have more than prevailed, we have progressed uh, enormously. At this stage, I would suggest to... Uh, uh, refrain from any, from any talk, any sense of weariness, of pessimism, of fatalism, uh, for simple reason. It ain't the first time, it ain't the last time, and it ain't the worst time. Shabbat Shalom.